Hello. I'm not nervous, you are. Okay. Uh, my name is Alejandro Varela. Hi, Robin. And uh, I'm going to read from The Town of Babylon, first novel. Um, penultimate chapter, no spoilers. Actually, I'll tell you real quick something about Andres, the protagonist. He's the kind of person who would describe himself as a Marxist, but wouldn't be able to tell you what that means. Um, in part because he never wanted to know so that he wouldn't be accused of anything. <laughs> God bless America. And then in part because um, uh, it's the sort of thing he looks up in Wikipedia twice a year and never retains. So anyway, Marco was kind enough not to recriminate more, but he looked at me the way someone looks at an old dog with three legs. The odd thing was that by the time I'd met Marco, I considered myself relatively well-versed in the histories of colonialism and oppression in this world. I'd already rejected, in theory, if not yet fully in practice, the white supremacist rubrics for language, culture, style, and self-worth that had defined my understanding of what it meant to be oneself in this world. But apparently, I hadn't scrubbed myself clean. After that day, Marco stopped calling and messaging with the same Elan. He wasn't rude, but neither was he interested anymore. He was kind enough to wait for me to get the hint, instead of dumping me outright. That encounter stayed with me for a long time. I couldn't understand why I had held on to such archaic notions. Why had I allowed a few superficial markers to determine how I would interact with others? I'd dated white men before Marco. I'd contended with their assumptions and discomforts, and yet somehow I'd cast myself in the role of white guy. In brief, I had fallen prey to the Latinx hierarchy, a lens really, a racist lens with tears and a color gradient. At the top, unsurprisingly, sit European Latinxes, white Tinos. Irrespective of nationality or ethnicity, this layer includes most of Buenos Aires and most of the upper castes of all Latin American countries. Diego Maradona is the sole occupant of the subsequent tier. Next are the mestizaje that lean more European than indigenous excluding anyone with visible African diaspora ancestry. Below them are the mestizaje that lean more indigenous than European, still excluding black Latinxes of all kinds. Each of these tiers is then stratified by nationality, beginning with white Argentines who don't live in the capital, Chileans who disdain Argentines, followed by non-coastal Colombians, despite how large El Costeño, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, looms globally, the Mexican actor Cantinflas, and other South Americans. Peruvians of Japanese descent follow. The subsequent tier is occupied by Central Americans, again stratified by genotype, but still not inclusive of black people. Below them is the trifecta, Puerto Ricans, the, Mexans, the Mexicans who haven't won Oscars, and Dominicans, all of whom not coincidentally have some of the longest, most oppressive histories with the United States. The penultimate tier includes indigenous people without African ancestry who were labeled Indios as, par, as per the ignorance of 15th century imperialists. Last are all the permutations of the African diaspora. Black indigenous, black Latinx, Afrodescendientes, Morenos and Pretos, Creoles and Maroons, Mijitos, Raizales, Garifunas. Countries with plurality or majority black populations like Belize, Panama, Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana, Haiti, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and all heretofore unmentioned Caribbean nations. This tier two is subject to discrimination based on hue and shade. Cubans are their own category and merit a secondary analysis. After all, their revolution continues. They somehow stood up to the empire and have thus far survived, giving them an almost magical status. In any case, no amount of post-breakup social mapping reunited Marco and me.